Hey guys, back with your latest Samsung news and Galaxy S21 news. S21 pricing information, which looks to be really good news for the S21 lineup, even the S21 Ultra. We have some chipset information. Snapdragon have released all the info on their brand new chipset. Galaxy Buds Pro, more information and news on these and all the latest Galaxy S21 leaks and rumors. Things are hotting up right now with the S21. Let's get right into the S21 leaks. So we have these new renders. These were given to us by Pigtoe and XLeaks and they get some CAD information. We are seeing this camera design time and time again. It really is confirmed now that this is going to be the new design with the camera array coming in from the side chassis there. I really like the design. Many renders are also giving us flat edges on the S21 phones, but apparently that is not true. The edges and the chassis will be rounded, but the rumors persist that the S21 and S21 Plus will have flat displays. Also interesting to note, Ice Universe mentioned these images and said that basically this is the S21 design, although the screen kind of isn't accurate. He actually gives us an image of what the screen will look like. And really the main takeaway here is symmetrical bezels. I absolutely love this design. It looks super modern, clean. So the iPhone 12 has this as well, except for the notch, of course, but you have very small symmetrical bezels the entire way around the device. I think it looks really 2021. It's kind of futuristic whilst being just really simple, like an industrial design. I really love it and I can't wait to see it on the S21 and S21 Plus. As we know, the Ultra should be sticking with a slight curve on the edges. Mystic Purple is one of the colors this year. And if you wanna know all the specs and all the colors and variants, just watch to the end. I put those up at the end of the video. But yeah, Mystic Purple, we're seeing more renders of this. Again, Ice Universe, basically this cryptic tweet telling us that that is going to be the color of Mystic Purple this time around. We also get Cozy Plains on Twitter showing us some fan renders of the S21 in that same color. Although he does mention that the design isn't official. This is just a fan made render. Again, those flat edges, that's not coming, but he says that the color is very accurate. So this is going to be mystic purple. We don't really have to rely on fan made renders though, because we have the color already. Galaxy Buds Pro have been leaked. Evan Blass, ultra reliable. That is the color of the official Galaxy Buds Pro. These are official marketing images. And as we know, the Buds, Buds Live, do share the colors of the phones that they're launched with. So that is the official color. Really great information though that we've got this week is in regards to the price of the S21 phones. The S21, the Plus and the S21 Ultra all possibly coming at a cheaper price than they did last year, which is obviously great news. This is extremely unusual though. New phones don't usually come cheaper than their counterparts did the last year. It just ruins the pricing structure for uh, resellers and retailers, and it kind of ruins everything, especially people that spent a thousand plus dollars on an S20 last year, a newer, better phone coming at a cheaper price. It's kind of not the way things are done, but this rumor is persisting and a lot of places are picking it up. Overall though, I would hope for a price freeze and especially if the S21 and Plus have flat displays, which everyone is telling us they will have, flat displays are way, way cheaper than curved displays and uh, at least a hundred bucks. Obviously Samsung make these, but they could pass that saving onto customers. It is noted though that this pricing structure, according to the leak anyway, is still under discussion. So definitely not official or finalized product information. And also we usually get price leaks from various countries which have different pricing structures and different tax that they add on. So everything needs to be taken with a pinch of salt, but here are the specifics. S21 may be coming at about 850 or 899 US dollar equivalent. That's a hundred bucks cheaper than the S20. Again, for the S21 Plus, another hundred bucks cheaper, maybe 1,050 or 1,049 bucks, uh, up to $1,100 or 1099. For the Ultra, possibly coming in at 1,250 bucks or 1,299 bucks. Again, about a hundred dollar discount over what we got last year. I really don't know how Samsung could justify selling the S20 Ultra at $1,400, bringing us a new phone with a new flagship SoC, a new type of screen technology and improved cameras for a cheaper price than they did last year. I don't know how they're going to make that okay with people that spent that much money on the S20. These are just rumors for now though. A huge article from Reuters 
apparently confirms that there's no Note 21 series. So 2021, no Note phones at all. They have some sources saying it is not happening for sure. However, there are a lot of leakers really, really adamant that at least one Note phone is coming. There's a couple of accounts saying there is a Note phone in development. The situation we have right now is that no Note phones have been registered. Usually you'll get product registration numbers, but they do not exist. So that's where it is for now. A lot of publications saying no Note and a couple of reliable leakers saying actually there is one in production. So we'll have to wait and see. So let's come on to the Snapdragon 888. This thing is really good. It is a big upgrade, actually. You're getting 20 to 30% better numbers on this chipset, which is really good. And a big focus on the camera, which is obviously super exciting. I love the camera and a lot of other people do too. To go over the key specs and features of this chipset, and we assume this is going into the S21 phones in America, North America, and China, and maybe a couple of other regions as well. So if you're in an Exynos region, you won't be getting this one. But the CPU, a 25% increase over last year, and the GPU, a 35% increase. They are really good numbers. This is year over year. So 12 months, they've managed to do that as they've moved to this five nanometer process. On top of that though, Qualcomm say that both the CPU and GPU are more efficient, 25% more efficient in the CPU, even though it's 25% more powerful. The GPU being 35% more powerful is 20% more efficient. These are good numbers year over year. It's pretty exciting. Obviously day to day, most things that you do, you're not gonna see a difference, but it's nice to have extra power and hopefully better battery life overall as well. What is really great and might affect actually most people's usage is the ISP or the image signal processor. It looks like Qualcomm have really spent a lot of money on this. So the Snapdragon 888 can record 4K simultaneously on three lenses. So you can have the main, the ultra wide, the zoom, all recording 4K at exactly the same time. What's also very good is that you can actually shoot images from three lenses at the same time as well. You can take a 28 megapixel image of three lenses all at once. 4K resolution now at 120 frames a second. It's also a really good spec. I don't really see this one too useful. Not many people shoot slow-mo a lot, but having a 4K resolution at 120 frames is pretty impressive. The Snapdragon 888 also supports 144 hertz refresh rates at Quad HD. That's really good. So high refresh rate and high resolution together. As you know, the S21 phones will be doing 120 Hertz at full HD and the Ultra will have the W Quad HD. So the chipset does have a bit of room on the upside as well. Expect some gaming phones to be coming with those specs. There are also really big rumors that Samsung may not be using a Qualcomm chipset at all this year. These come from the fact that the brand logo was left out of all of Qualcomm's communications during the launch. I would assume that Snapdragon is still going to be used in China at least, and also the US. The Exynos also looks really powerful this year. We've seen a few benchmarks that really put it up there with the Snapdragon chipset. So I think they're both gonna be really good chipsets this year. And I think the gap between them is going to be smaller than ever. Samsung are also releasing Galaxy Smart Tags. These are the AirTags competitor, although AirTags aren't even out yet. Ultra wideband enabled tags, put them in your bag, put them in your car, and then use ultra wideband technology to locate them really accurately. It is said that the S21 Plus and S21 Ultra will have a ultra wideband chip inside. Apparently the base model S21 will not have it, so you won't be able to use that one with the AirTags, but the upper two models will have that functionality. You can pause the video on these specs if you wanna see everything we know about all three of the phones right now. That is it for this one though. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already, and I'll see you in the next one.